One of the most complex cases of the past 30 years occurred at England's Royal Air Force Bentwaters and Woodbridge bases, surrounded by Rendlesham Forest. After those mysterious events, this question remains. What exactly did happen when unidentified aerial lights, beams, and a triangular craft of unknown origin entered the forest repeatedly between December 26th after midnight and 5 a.m. on December 28th, 1980, when at least two dozen military personnel were involved? Only four months ago, Colonel Charles I. Halt the man who was then the deputy base commander at RAF Bentwaters went on the record in a June 25th press release to state. We need that UFOs I saw were structured machines moving under intelligent control and were operating beyond the realm of anything I've ever seen before or since. I believe the objects I saw in close quarter were extraterrestrial in origin and that the security services of both the United States and England were and have been complicit in trying to subvert the significance of what occurred at Rendlesham by use of well-practiced methods of disinformation. I asked Colonel Halt to read his own statement in the press release just as a test. Is he comfortable? Is this what he really meant? And he said, absolutely. Colonel Halt served in Vietnam and Japan before being assigned as deputy base commander at RAF Bentwaters in 1980. His boss and base commander was Colonel Ted Conrad, who had not been on the job very long. Their boss was the wing commander of the 81st Tactical Fighter Wing at Bentwaters Woodbridge, Major General Gordon Edmund Williams. It is General Williams who allegedly received 35 millimeter film in two canisters on December 30th, 1980 from RAF Bentwaters Captain and Day Shift Commander Mike Verano, who told Larry Warren and Peter Robbins, authors of Left at Eastgate, quote, I did drive General Gordon Williams to an F-16 on the Bentwaters tarmac the morning of December 30th. He had two canisters of 35 millimeter footage with him. He told me directly that it was actual footage of the UFOs on the ground, close quote, Captain Verano. It is assumed now that 35 millimeter footage included the roll of 36 exposure black and white still film that Sergeant James Peniston says that he used in his camera to photograph the triangular craft on the ground in Rendlesham Forest in the early morning hours of December 26, 1980, the first of at least three nights in December 1980 of unusual phenomena in Rendlesham Forest. There was yet another event that took place on January 9th after those three nights, and I will be talking about that later on. Jim Penniston talked to me in September 2009 in an interview for Earth Files in Coast to Coast AM about the solid black triangle-shaped craft that he sketched and later touched. Before we hear his description of his own words, here is brief background about former RAF Bentwater Staff Sergeant James W. Penniston. He was RAF Woodbridge Security Supervisor on December 26, 1980. He was 26 years old at the time and had been in the U.S. Air Force since 1973 after graduating from Freeport High School in Freeport, Illinois. His RAF Bentwaters deputy base commander was Colonel Charles Halt. Not long after the clock changed to midnight after Christmas, Sergeant Penniston received a radio call from Central Security Control asking him to proceed to the RAF Woodbridge East Gate. There he was to contact his counterpart on the police side of military security Law Enforcement Supervisor Staff Sergeant Bud Steffens. U.S. Air Force Police handle domestic issues and who is coming in and out of the base. U.S. Air Force Security protects the base perimeter, resources, and flight line operations. On December 26th, at least 14 security personnel and six Air Force policemen were working RAF Woodbridge. 
One of those Air Force policemen was Airman First Class John Burroughs, who reported to Sergeant Bud Steffens. When Staff Sergeant Jim Penniston arrived at the East Gate, Sergeant Steffens told him there was a problem in the Rendlesham Forest. Sergeant Penniston could see reddish-orange lights in the trees, assumed it was a crashed airplane on fire in the woods in the beginning, and asked Sergeant Steffens, when did it crash? But Sergeant Steffens said, Jim, it did not crash, it landed. That puzzled Jim Penniston at that moment, and he decided that he must call the 81st Police Squadron Shift Commander, Lieutenant Fred Skip Baran and asked for an Eastern radar check. Lieutenant Baran told Sergeant Penniston there was an object over the base and that, quote, something had disappeared off radar, close quote. That convinced Shift Commander Lieutenant Baran to give Sergeant Penniston permission to go off base to investigate. And everyone that I have talked to concerning Bentwater stresses the fact that on that first night of December 26, Baran and others in charge were reluctant to go off base into civilian territory in the Rendlesham Forest that we were U.S. Air Force in a base in England and that forest where these lights were reported was civilian territory and Bud Steffens and Baran were very concerned about allowing anybody to go off the base into the woods at that time. This is why there had to be permission for Sergeant Penniston to take anyone with him out into those woods. Sergeant Penniston asked Sergeant Steffens to go with him into the woods, but Steffens did not want to leave base property. So John Burroughs volunteered to join Sergeant Penniston along with another Airman First Class, Edward Kavansack. The three men traveled in a pickup truck from the East Gate toward the fiery light in the forest. They drove as far as they could to the trees, parked and walked closer to the mysterious lights that were colored red, orange, blue with a little white. Their radios were interrupted by very unusual static. Central Security Control called for radio silence, and Sergeant Penniston asked Ed Kabansak to go back toward the truck and act as a radio relay because of all the static between Sergeant Penniston, Airman Burroughs, and security control. John Burroughs says recently that he has learned from their 81st Security Police Squadron shift commander that night, Lieutenant Fred Baran, that radio silence was called for because security control lost all communications with Sergeant Penniston and John Burroughs for about 45 minutes. Here is how retired Staff Sergeant Jim Penniston remembers the black triangular craft with a glassy surface in Rendlesham Forest that night on December 26, 1980 after midnight and his own not notice in his book, his notebook, that he could not account for 45 minutes. It was a uh, triangular craft. The fabric of the craft was black like glass, and then throughout the fabric of the craft there was some coloring, varying from saucer shape to pie shaped circles that moved around the craft. Some were red, blue, some yellow, or orange, I guess more orange. John is still with me, and I start taking observations in the notebook to coordinate the time I was there and what my actions were. You are seeing what look like changing geometric patterns below the glass or above the glass? Predominantly below the glass on the underside of the craft and then occasionally moving around the upper side. It appeared that the coloring was part of the actual craft fabric. It made no sense. I've never seen anything that had that type of effect before.